All right, get in, loser. We are talking about Mean Girls, the musical, the movie. Hello, darlings, and welcome to Performance Perspective, where we talk about different performances, whether they're on TV or stage, and then we share our perspective. Now, if you are new, hi, I'm Kara Darling, and if you love musicals, then you are going to like this channel, so don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we are talking about Mean Girls, the musical, turning into the movie, and yes, some of the cast uh, came out as far as who is playing who, and I have to say something. I um, actually don't know anything about this musical. I know the movie very well. When the movie came out, I was around like 13, 14, so it was very much a part of my life. A lot of the topics that it brought up was very current to, you know, even the schools that I went into. Um, it is a classic to me. There are, I mean, the fact that we still quote it to this day, um, I mean, it, it's not that it amazes me, it makes me really happy <laughs> because, I don't know, there's something about if someone says it's October 3rd, I'm like, oh, we're gonna, we're good, we're gonna be friends, we're fine. Even though I don't know much about the musical, it doesn't mean that I'm not willing to learn about it. I am planning on going to, if you don't know, I'm located in San Francisco. I'm planning on going to the Mean Girls tour. Um, it's coming here. And so I plan on just going by myself and watching the musical. So stay tuned because then I will be uh, talking about my experience and what I think of the musical. So without further ado, I did pick an article to sort of reflect on and also to talk about the cast that they have so far. And listen, again, I love your perspective. So please feel free to comment down below of who's your favorite Mean Girl character. Mine is Damien. I'm talking about the movie. Mine is Damien. <laughs> she doesn't even go here. Like, <laughs> brings joy in my life, okay? So again, let me know who is your favorite Mean Girls character and why. Um, and let's get into this article. So this article is from The Hollywood Reporter. Links are in the description because I'm not reading the whole thing. I'm just getting to the part where the discussion of the musical turning into a movie comes up. In 2020, it was announced that Michaels and Paramount Pictures were planning on adapting the musical version of the story into a movie. Michaels will return to produce along with Faye, who will pen the adaption script. Samantha Jane and Arturo Perez Jr. are set to direct, and Richmond and lyricist Nell Benjamin will also return to work on the film's music. It was also recently announced that Andrew Rice, I hope I said that name right, it, it said, I think it says Andrew, but also looks like it says Angry Rice. <laughs> Andrew Rice, Ali Carvalho, uh, Jaquel Spivy, and Renee Rapp will star. So that's who's cast in the movie musical so far. I did look them up and ultimately I didn't really recognize them except for the one that did the voice of Moana. Also, I did watch on Disney Plus The Little Mermaid. And so, uh, hear me out, hear me out. When I read that she was in the, the musical, I thought, oh, she's, I feel like she would be a really good, you know, Karen. That's what I thought. Then I saw she's playing Janice. I don't know. I don't know the musical. So maybe there's something different. But when I think of Janice, I feel, you know, like a bit more edgy. Even if she's in hair and makeup and has more like that look, I still don't really see it for her. I think it's going to be like, you know, Haley uh, Steinfeld. I think it's going to be like that. I don't know how to explain it. It's like some people, you can look at them and go, they're cool, they're weird. They are sticking to their own, you know, drum beat. But with other people, it's just like, why are you wearing this costume and you need to figure out who you are and stuff to me janice is someone that was hurt she, she's a woman of scorn and she's doing everything she can to repel the plastics the mean girls and be like i want nothing to do with you so this is my style this is what i'm sticking with it's not what is the the thing be like 
it's not a phase, it's a lifestyle. That's how I feel Janice is. That's the only thing in the cast so far that I felt a sense of like, huh, what? Uh, love to know your thoughts. Let me know what you think of that. We're super involved with that, Richmond says. What we're trying to do with the movie is take the score that sounds like a Broadway score in a good way and give the movie a fresher palette to make it sound more like stuff you want to listen to on Spotify, as opposed to when you're sitting eighth row center at a Broadway theater or the Pantages. It's kind of making it a fresher, younger take on the whole thing. We're kind of reinvented the music for the movie, so it's really fun. I think that's really cool, actually, and that makes sense. Um, it makes me wonder, of course, thinking of Dear Evan Hansen, when they you have the music live, it's gorgeous and you really feel it, but having it on screen didn't really do it. I think that's something that they might have issues with uh, doing a musical that is modern. So if you saw like Fiddler on the Roof, um, it goes with it, but Fiddler on the Roof is not a modern tale. Um, I have a question, maybe you guys know, but is Mean Girls going to still be in the 2000s or are they having it like in today's time? In like the, you know, in the 2020s? I, I really do hope it stays in the 2000s and like the mid 2000s because this was the time that MySpace was coming in so there wasn't a lot of internet bullying or things like that. It was like, okay, we could text this person or try and get a photo. Like it was, it was much harder to expose someone versus like internet. Um, I mean, listen, TikTok calling out all those cheaters, they're pretty quick. TikTok, do your thing. <laughs> Adds Nadina Hazan, who plays Regina in the tour. I wonder if that's who I'm seeing. Hmm. We're one of just a handful of girls who get to play these roles professionally. And at this level, and that's such a blessing. Because now, when the movie comes out, what we've done will also get to be shared with so many other people who maybe weren't able to come see us on tour or weren't able to go see the Broadway cast. I always feel so lucky to just be a part of this legacy. After working together over the past three decades, Richmond and Faye have mastered the art of collaborating together, not to mention their most important collaboration, their family. How cute. Don't forget our children, he laughs. We collaborated on our children and our dogs. As we're working together on the musical, Richmond says, it couldn't be better. We know when to get out of each other's way when we're working together, the composer adds. Like, who's taking this part? Who's doing that? Who needs to push harder on getting the script done for this? We're just around each other all the time, same office all the time. She's a hilariously fun person to be around. The stage adaption has also made significant strides in representation by casting people of color in each of the leading roles. All right, I am skipping ahead because it's talking about the opportunities and how diverse Mean Girls can be through anybody's life. And so it, it doesn't really matter the color of the skin of the characters playing. Maybe Katie, right? Maybe Katie has to be white because of the line. I don't know if it's in the musical, but of course the line where it's like, if you're from Africa, why are you white? <laughs> you can't say that, Karen. <laughs> I don't know, who's seen the musical? Is that in there? I guess I'll find out soon. From movie to musical to movie musical, Mean Girls has become a teen cult classic with, <laughs> with quotes like so fetch and you can't sit with us. Firmly established as fixtures in the pop culture of the early 2000s, nearly 20 years after the original film's release. Audiences still find their way back to it. That's true, yeah. Hence, us here together. All right, so that's as much of the article I'm going to read. And now you know my perspective on the cast. I would love to know yours. Something I do want to touch on, the article, you know, I did skip ahead, but it was talking about how Mean Girls um, has a chance to, you know, uh, diversify, right? And that the plastics can be, you know, different you know, girls of color and, and things like that. But, Tina Fey was uh, ahead of the time, really, or I don't even know how to put this correctly, but the character Damien was based on a friend of hers, Damien Holbrook, and she's been friends with him since 12 years old, and she felt that it was important to have 
a gay, a gay character in it because she had friends that were gay and the representation of that is usually like it's someone really flamboyant and they're in fashion and stuff versus like it, 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 they're a person. Daniel Franzese was the one that played Damien and at the time he wasn't out of the closet and because of this character it allowed him to realize um, who he really is and to ultimately get to the place where he was comfortable to come out. Uh, when there was the reunion with the Mean Girls, he talks about it in that, in their like Zoom, you know, um, thing. And, and it was really interesting. Anyways, darlings, that's it for today's episode. Please tell me what you think about Mean Girls the musical turning into a movie. Do you agree with the cast list so far? And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see it live so then I have more context. And then when the movie comes out, I can actually go, oh, okay, well, here's the difference from the movie to the musical to now the movie musical. Uh, so without further ado, take care, darling. <laughs>